In the morning, when you get up, make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So if the small catechism is anything to go by, every day is Holy Cross Day. And if not, why not? There's pious Helena, Constantine's mother, and her finding of the true cross. At the time of Luther, there was the elector Frederick, who had his own little piece of the cross. And as Luther reminds us, there's so many that, well, the cross would be extraordinarily large. And he does, Prince Frederick, Elector Frederick, I should say, Luther's elector, he commemorated that day in 1517. Well, maybe you thought that we Lutherans have gotten rid of all that kind of superstitious stuff, making the sign of the cross, waving your hand around. What kind of good could that do? It's just an external, physical, and certainly not very spiritual thing to do, and really, what does it even mean in and of itself? Well, how spiritual and how physical was your getting up this morning? <laughs> Could you check in to the Lord, with the Lord in prayer before you had all your spiritual capacities lined up? And when did you have them all quite lined up? Everything was just right to pray. What about your f- physical body? What part of you did you do your praying with? Your hands, on your knees, your mouth, or your brain? You can pray without hands, without knees, without a mouth, but not without your brain, you think. That has to be the thing doing the praying, working, and concentrating. Well then, what happens when you start to think about something else when you're about your prayers? Does that make them not count at all? This is actually an ancient heresy. It's the Apollinarians who thought that prayer had to be in the mind. It was actually thought that was the most connected with God. You will have observed so far that all of the talk about prayer has been really about yourself. But no prayer starts with you. Prayer, first and foremost, is calling upon the name of the Lord. And if he hadn't given you his name to call upon, then your prayer would indeed be nothing but talk about yourself and a God who you've projected out to suit your wishes and a God who only is as good as he's delivering upon all those wishes. And you keep going with your prayers only as long as, well, he keeps giving you what you asked for. That's how most people pray. They treat him like a genie in a bottle, and it's awesomely religious if you're into that sort of thing. But you've been set free from it. Because God has put his name on you in the water of your baptism. And if as an infant, how many of your spiritual capacities were there when you were baptized? How alert were you to what God was doing to you? Probably not at all. Just name and water, that's baptism. But name is there as it's spoken. And it is only spoken if there's a mouth there to speak it. And a hand there to do some watering of you along with the name. It's all very physical, actually, baptism. Words and water, as the large catechism confesses. We see a man speaking and doing. But what he is speaking and doing is in the name of the Lord. And what is in the Lord's name is the Lord's own speaking and doing by the mouth and hands that he has put there as his instrument for his use, for his speaking and his doing. And so of that, there can be no doubt that when he is speaking and doing, the wording and watering are actually being done, being spoken and done as mandated by the Lord. Baptism is as physical as it is spiritual. Most of us don't remember our baptism, though, and yet as baptized, the Lord has made us his own, brought us to life as his own. Not just back then, that life he thus has given is given to the whole of you, 
And it's not limited to a place or a time. There's never a place and time where you are not a baptized child of God. Each day, then, lived one day at a time as baptized children. So when the catechism said, make the, when you get up each day, make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, daily, says the small catechism, our baptism is to have its way with us, to repent us, to forgive us, to enliven us the way in us. And that's why the small catechism instructs us to begin each day as those whom the Lord has baptized, for us then to live each day in the confidence and with the resources that God has given us by that baptism. It's really actually a hazardous thing to try to do, to try to live your day not as if you were baptized. What the Lord does is for sure. There isn't actually much else in this world that, is, that can give us that kind of confidence. When he baptized you, he did it in a way that left no doubt that it was he that was doing the baptizing and that you are the one he baptized. Now, it is a bit difficult to get all of that running through your head in your brain first thing in the morning. All the goodness that is yours by that giving of baptism. So probably your brain's not quite checked in, even if you join me live in the congregation of prayer at 9 a.m. I'm never quite there yet either. But your hand may do with its calling on the name of the Lord too, which may pull the mouth into saying it, all of which is evoked by having given you his name. So it's never really a dead thing brought to life by us when we check in. Whatever it is, it is the doing itself, doing himself, whose name it is and whose name he is the doer of. It's God who gave you the name and it's God who's putting that name upon your lips and even taking your hand to make that sign of the cross to remember the gift of baptism that he gave you. So maybe think of it this way when you're beginning your prayers. Dear Lord, please be doing your name with me today. And that the whole of you, none of you is left out of where his name is and where his name is doing. And so where that is is located by the sign of the Holy Cross. This is why Luther retained that practice for us. The sign of the cross is a cipher or a symbol of the name that was put on you in your baptism. That's why when you're baptized, that sign is put upon your forehead and your heart. There are some accounts, early accounts, in the history of the Christian church at baptism where they attempted actually to write the whole name of God inscribed on the person being baptized. Some churches still retain the practice of the baptized receiving it actually as a tattoo upon their skin, that sign of the Holy Cross. But Jesus would be enough, actually, just to say in the name of Jesus, and if not the whole name, then simply the mark and his name, Savior. The Lord God is put on you, his name, and it is confessed by that sign of the cross. Making the sign of the cross upon yourself is then nothing less than just simply saying, I am the baptized, and Lord, you have put your name on me. You have named me as one of your own. You did that in the water of baptism, and there it's all remembered, even simply with your hand, even without words, in the sign of the cross. So the small catechism put first things first. And after that, something more. But all three steps don't have to be at once. There's space available, as hinted at. But best that you do all three, even, not, even if not all at once, to get up, make the sign of the cross, and say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and that will get you through your day. Because where God has put his name, there he has promised to work. Good and gracious gifts for you. You wouldn't think of the rest of your day in little pieces that you would break up either. And anytime you forget one part, then there's a place for, well, for temptation to have its way with you. So remember your baptism. Make the sign of the cross that the Lord made upon you there. Remember his name that he placed upon you and say it out loud. And that way, 
You'll never forget who you are in Christ Jesus and the gift that he purchased and won for you by his cross. Forgiveness, life, and salvation. May God grant it in his holy name. Amen.